This is a mistake. Yes? Yes, I understand. Sorry, Eli. Your stay of execution has been denied. Is there anything you wish to say before it's... I'm innocent. This is a horrible mistake. still alive. Put him back in the chair. You can't do that. Judge Avery. He's right. He was sentenced to die. And he was declared dead. You can't execute a man twice. I want to know what it did to him. trying to make my lightning lamp sensitive to music. Why should your lamp be any different than you? <laughs> I'm talking about ohms and watts here. I'm talking about electricity and music meeting together as one in harmony. I'm talking about the visual extension of the electronic music age. Ah, modern day version of the Van de Graaff generator, huh? You know how to make this uh, work in time with the music? Yes, of course. But we have something more pressing to hand. One of the uh, query letters that we sent out to Lewis's old customers came back, stamped no forwarding address. Well, that happens all the time. Ah, uh, yes, but this time, and in this case, I think that that particular purchaser of antiques chose not to be followed. Oh, they're using an alias, Dr. Christian Lindheim. 
I checked with the medical association. They never even heard of a doctor by that name. What did Lewis sell him? An electric chair. A real one. All done. I hope that didn't hurt too much. I've always been opposed to causing pain. Didn't feel a thing, Doc. This gas is ultra euphoric, very 60s. <laughs> Nitrous oxide tends to take the edge off. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, the Muzak is a plus idea, but generic pop is a void. Try something more progressive. Okay. How long have you been a dentist? It's a semi-grim job. Uh, a long time. <laughs> I studied dentistry back in the 70s, but I got sidetracked. I went back to school because I like this profession. <laughs> you kids, you fill me with energy. <laughs> Bizarre. I like it. Dr. Lindheim? Please, come in. I, uh, just wanted to tell you how lucky we all feel to have had you with us at Haverstock this last year. Most dentists of your caliber wouldn't come near a reform school. Well, I'm happy to hear that, but it's really no sacrifice on my part. These kids, they give me just the kind of stimulation I need now. Yeah, they sure seem to like you, too. Which, uh, makes it all the harder to tell you the news. School's closing down in two weeks. Why? Uh, you know, the bureaucrats, matter of funding, among other things. I'm just as sorry about it as you are. Sorry, Eli. Your stay of execution has been denied. The microchair had quite a history. Installed in 1937. There were 19 men executed in it, 18 of them successful. You mean someone survived? In 1978, a fellow by the name of Eli Pittman. He was convicted of murdering his girlfriend. The chair gained a certain notoriety after Pittman lived through his execution. That's where it used to be. The chair was never used after the Pittman incident. Sold to a private collector, I believe. Uncle Lewis? Uh, whatever happened to Pittman? Well, that's the sad part. Turns out that he was really innocent. Another man confessed to the killing. I always had a feeling about Pittman. He even tried to get him a stay of execution. Can you imagine being innocent and still getting executed? Mm. Well, you must have been in pretty bad shape, hmm? Yeah, he was. A little while later, he was transferred to the Temple Hills Mental Hospital. Well, I'd like to stay and help you some more in your book on infamous antiques, but the wife says dinner at 6 o'clock sharp, and I don't like to keep her waiting. Oh, of course not. Thank you very much, Warden. You'll be more help than enough. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lindheim. Nice meeting you. Open. Uh, 
I'll bet you chipped that lateral incisor in a fight. Same thing happened to me once. You get in plenty of fights when you're an orphan. You're an orphan, too? Yeah. Tough break, isn't it? No family, no friends, no one who cares whether you live or die. I had a girlfriend, but she's been gone a long time. Now all I have is my work. You and the other kids, you help me to live a full life again. You give me the juice I need to go on, and I appreciate that. You're OK, Doc. I'm in the sun. Put it back in the chair. This is a horrible mistake. He was sentenced to die. Hendricks, I'm Dr. Christian Lindheim. We spoke on the phone. Oh, yes. Come in. Sit down. Can I get you a cup of coffee? No. Thank you. I must say, I'm thrilled to have a former district attorney willing to discuss my case. Well, normally, I wouldn't, but it sounded so intriguing, I could hardly resist. You say you have proof that an innocent man was convicted of murder? Indeed, I have. I'm most interested. A potential settlement for any lawsuit astronomical. Excuse me, Dr. Lindheim. Uh, have we met before? Ten years ago. I'm Eli Pittman. That was not my fault. The evidence was, was conclusive. Uh, no. I think that, um, that under the circumstances, uh, excuse me, it would be best if you would leave now. Yes. I think it would be best, too. We found all kinds of stuff on Pittman in the library. I made Xeroxes of everything. It was terrible what happened to him. Yes, yes, it was. He was discharged from the hospital about eight months after the failed execution. Apparently, it was something of a legal embarrassment. There was no precedent to hold him. 
Where is he now? Well, nobody really knows. He was an orphan, so there were no relatives. Let me have a look at those clippings, would you, Maggie? Dear God. What is it? Daniel Kendricks. He was electrocuted in his office last night. He was on this morning's news. He was the DA who prosecuted Pittman? Yes, uh, this is Speed Demon Courier Service. We have a package here for Judge Joseph Avery. We need to verify when he'll be home for delivery. Thank you. You've been very kind. Get this, Eli Pittman was a fourth-year dental student at State University. Phi Beta Kappa, no less. How could I be so stupid? Dr. Christian Lindheim, the man who bought the chair from Lewis, I'd assumed that he was a medical doctor, never even thought about him being a dentist. What are you saying? No wonder the Medical Association didn't have any record on him. The Dental Association just might. You're not thinking that Dr. Lindheim and Eli Pittman are the same person? That's exactly what I'm thinking, Mickey. the hell out of me. I'm sorry, Melissa. I didn't mean to. Look, I knocked, and I thought I heard you tell me to come in. I was just on my way out. Yeah. You're not a narc or anything, are you, Doc? Come on. I just came by to see why you missed your appointment. What appointment? They didn't tell you? I have to check that crown I cemented last week. You've been excused from class. So, history class is history. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> Can you give me some more of that funny gas? Of course. Anything you want. Now look, if Pittman is Lindheim and he's got the chair. Oh, yeah, but what's the chair got to do with this? I'm not even sure right now, but first thing we have to do is find Pittman. Or Lindheim. And warn all the people that he may be after. All the people in those photos? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what are we going to tell them? Well, first, Mickey, let's hope that they're still alive. Let's have a look at that lower cuspid. Can we crank it up a bit? No, no, not the music. I'm talking the gas. <laughs> Alyssa? You in there? That crown's just fine. You know, Doc, you're a nice guy. Not like the suits. Sorry to disturb you, Doctor. Have you seen Melissa Duval? She didn't show up for her history class. Uh, no, I'm afraid I haven't, Mr. Downing. Hmm. Well, if you should see her, would you give me a buzz? Absolutely.
Judge Joseph Avery, 24 West 59th Street. You sure he's gonna be home? Yes, I talked to him. He said he's gonna be home. No way was I gonna talk to him about the stuff over the phone. Can't wait to see you explain it to him in person. <laughs> Judge Avery. Yes. Who is that? An old friend with an ethical question. Are you the young man I spoke to on the phone earlier? I'm afraid we haven't spoken in 10 years. The ethical question I mentioned is as follows. What would be the proper, or rather the judicial form of punishment for someone who wrongfully executed an innocent man? I want to know what it did to him. I want to know, I want to know what it did to him. I want to know, I want to know what it did to him. You. Don't you come any closer. Gladly. Inside wasn't hurt. There was something about it uh, uh, grounding out or something. Just don't touch anything metal. You mean that this man is becoming some kind of a transformer or capacitor using electricity to kill? Jack, every single person in those photos has turned up dead accidental electrocution. All of them? Of all the ones we've been able to track down, I mean, there is a group photo with not everyone captioned. Here it is. Now, we haven't been able to ID this man and a couple of guards. Well, Warden Hobbs should be able to help us there. Ryan, uh, you better check with him. I've also been able to discover the whereabouts of Dr. Christian Lindheim. Well, you're kidding, where? Well, the Dental Association had a record on him, all right. He's on staff at that old Haverstock Reform School. I've made arrangements for us to pay them a little visit. Buying antiques. What else? Well, if Lindheim and Pittman are the same person, you guys better be wearing your rubber boots and gloves. Yeah, some storm. 
And like a fool, I forgot my rain boots. Ah. Well, they certainly can come in handy. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell me why exactly is this facility closing down? Oh, funding mostly. <laughs> See, most of our kids are runaways and orphans. And that's not high on a politician's priority list. And of course, there's a high rate of escapes. We lost three kids last month. Down here, we've got uh, turn-of-the-century wall fixtures, beveled leaded glass. <laughs> we've even got a, an antique French bathtub. I'm sure you'll find something interesting. Yeah, that's uh, what we hope. I, I understand that you even have your own staff dentist here. As a matter of fact, we do. Mr. Downing, please pick up extension 440. Excuse me. <laughs> Downing here. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'll be right over. Thanks for seeing me again, Warden. Just had a few more details to pick up for the last chapter. Certainly, anything I can do to help. Now, these are all the people who Witnessed Eli Pittman's execution, right? Yeah, that's correct. This guy right here. We haven't been able to ID him. It's uh, uh, Patrick Strider. He was the jury foreman during the Pittman trial. These people must feel terrible about what happened. No doubt about that. So, do you know where we might be able to find Mr. Strider? I'm not really. He originally lived in uh, Brookville. Brookville, well, that may be able to help. I have some more information in my personal files at home. You're welcome to come over tonight to go through them if you want. Maybe after we have some dinner. Six o'clock sharp, as usual. Why? Well, Peggy's uh, making meatloaf. That sounds delicious. Why don't you let me give you a call? I gotta get together with my partner, see what he came up with. Good. Good. Well, according to that directory, his office is in the main building, room 144. Well, that's a good place to start. Lindheim, you wanted to see me? Dr. Lindheim? Ah! Oh. 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 You look like a classical fan to me. How about a canon in D major? questions the old man and the girl who are they what did you say to them antique dealers I, why are you doing this no no Sorry, Mr. Downing, but I had to be sure no one suspects. I assure you, all pain will be gone in a matter of seconds. Look, there it is.
Jack, you must have gone out the store. Yeah. Mickey! This is the electric chair. He's using this for dental work. Look at this. Pass me that syringe. See if you can find a small cork from one of those bottles. Here. What are you doing? Magnetizing this needle. You're making a compass. Pittman obviously has a huge charge of electricity. And this may just draw the needle. But we found the chair. Why do we have to go after him? The chair's not going anywhere for a while, but Pittman evidently is. His business must not be finished. A transformer. At least we've recovered the chair. Whatever charge he has is going to have to last him. I still don't understand why he didn't try to electrocute us. He's saving it for his next victim. You got the chair back. Yes, indeed we did. What did you turn up? Well, the guy in the photo, he turned out to be the jury foreman. He's dead. We should have found some way of stopping Pittman. Well, no, it wasn't Pittman. He died 10 years ago, right after the trial. Cancer. So we've got no more victims, and we've got the chairs. Looks like our job is done, huh? There is a killer on the loose. There's no way to prove it. You don't understand. It's uh, a... Ryan, we think he's been getting his energy from killing kids. You know those supposed escapees from the reform school? Great. Just great. And we're not at all sure that he has no more victims. He left without trying to electrocute us. He's obviously not finished. Well, who, who could it be? I mean, everybody in that photo is dead. Who says it has to be someone in the picture? That's right. <laughs> Who was in charge of the execution? Who gave the uh, go-ahead to throw the switch? The warden. It's a recording. All the lines are down in the area because of the storm. 
We have to warn him somehow. I'm afraid we have to do more than that. Warden Hobbs invited me over for dinner tonight. He said he'd be home at 6 sharp. It's almost 5.30. We can just make it. What time is it? It's 5.57. office today, dear? Good, good. Not as good as being home with you, though. Uh, <laughs> Has our dinner guest called? No, but uh, the phones are out. I'm sure he'll be here shortly. Okay. I'll be up in the study. Okay, okay you turn left at the next corner, and it should be down two blocks. He said he was weakened when he grabbed hold of the hood on him, huh? Yeah, yeah, he barely had enough energy to run away. Must have been grounded out or short-circuited in some way. Let's try and find a way to make that happen again. Well, you must be Ryan Dalian. I'm glad you could join us on an awful night like this. <clears throat> Something wrong, Mrs. Hobbs? No, no, not at all. I, uh, I just pictured you much younger from my husband's description. I'm sorry. That must have sounded terrible. Don't give it a second thought. Is the warden around? He's just upstairs. I I'll let him know you're here. No, I'd like to surprise him. I think he'd appreciate it. Of course. Dinner's almost ready. May I help you? Mrs. Hobbs, I'm Ryan Dalian. But who's that man upstairs? It's Pittman. Eli Pittman. Yes. Oh, no, wait, wait. Call the police. But the, but the phones are still out. Yeah, Mickey, take her and go and get some help. Yeah, come on, let's go. Ryan, get the jumper cables out of the car and then attach one of the claws to the plumbing, to the radiators, furnace, anything, anything that'll ground it. I wondered about Hops. Get away from him! Stick around. I'm sure there'll be enough of me left over for you. It's not gonna work, Pittman. I've witnessed the whole thing. You're more than welcome to watch. And I'd love to hear your explanation to the police. Pittman, we've got the chair. It's all over. You're a dead man! Oh!
nothing like the sun. Yeah, I can't say I missed a storm, but the lightning was kind of fun. Speak for yourself. Yeah, electricity is one of nature's most powerful elements. Used properly can save millions of lives through modern medicine, maybe someday even take us to the farthest reaches of the universe. Not to mention power my stereo. Yeah, thank you very much. I guess the list of applications does go on into infinity, but used wrongly. Ooh. How's it coming, Jack? It's finished. Looks the same to me. Yeah, well, there are a few little delicate adjustments. You put your hand on the globe. Go on, go ahead. It won't shock you. No pun intended. This is pretty cool. Kind of gives me a tingling feeling. <laughs> yes, I'd say it's a success. <laughs> mm. <laughs>